just waiting on some people to join. We're going to be uh, talking to Glenn Coffey Sr. here in a few minutes about his new book uh, that him and his son wrote. Just waiting on some more people to join the live e video. Then we'll get him on here and talk to him. See my dad's on, Jacob's on. Just waiting on a few people to get on. James is on. What's up, James? Just send a message to Mr. Coffee. He should be joining here shortly. We'll get him on as soon as he pops up. Talk to him about this book. He texted back, so he should be popping up on here in just a minute, and I'll be able to add him as soon as he comes on and starts watching. I'm going to see towards the end if he wants to answer any questions, if y'all might have some questions for him or whatever. Hang around. We'll see if, if he's willing to answer some questions. We'll see if we can get him to answer. If y'all got any questions or anything for him. You talking about the last night's episode with the Alabama thing, James? Thought it was pretty neat. Mr. Coffee takes it back. He should be on in just a second. So I don't think he's ever done a Facebook Live video before, so might take him a minute to get on here so yeah that was a pretty cool episode last night uh if y'all hadn't been watching that series on espn i think it's called uh Roll, training days rolling with the tide it's pretty cool last night they talked a lot of, with tua and jalen and getting them on there so that was pretty neat He's on there trying to get on, so just give it just a minute. I'm looking for him, so. I think Eric is asking him if he's watching the video now. Just tell him he's got to start watching the live feed. Hopefully he'll be on here in just a second, hopefully. We've never done an interview on here before, so it's kind of technical difficulty having to work it out, so. Do you like this background a little better, James? Hey, Mr. Coffee Senior's working, so we're gonna bring him in here. Let's see, I'm gonna add him to it. In just a second, it's showing adding him, so. So you got me? Yeah, I got you, Mr. Coffee. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing lovely. Uh, thanks for having me on your show. That's awesome. We appreciate you being here. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know, uh, this is the father of former Alabama great Glenn Coffee Jr. that played for Saban uh, in the mid to late 2000s there. Uh, 
great guy. We talked a little bit earlier. Him and uh, Coffee Jr. got a new book coming out. It's called There's More to Life Than the Pursuit of Money. Uh, it's a little bit about, you know, Glenn's decision to leave the NFL, that type of thing. And, uh, I was going to ask Mr. Coffee, uh, kind of tell us about the name of the book and how that came about and, you know, what, what the story is behind that. Um, I, I would love to, Brett. Uh, first, uh, our book is inspired by uh, God. So having said that, can I say a quick prayer? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Um, Father, I know what I want to say. You know what I need to say. Therefore, Father, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, okay, first of all, yes, uh, my son and I, we have co-authored a 16-chapter book. And the title is, uh, There's More to Life Than the Pursuit of Money. And uh, it's just an amazing story. Uh, and, of course, Glenn Jr. is the main character. And, um, you know, he had a very successful year <clears throat> with the uh, Alabama Christmas Tide. Roll Tide. <laughs> Roll Tide. <laughs> was here, man. I'm so excited. <laughs> Actually, I feel like he's still playing, although he's coaching there now. I'm so proud of him. But uh, he uh, played at Alabama, uh, drafted to the 49ers in the third third round. I think it was the 74th pick. And uh, he played uh, one season. The next season, uh, he retired to start his own ministry. And, uh, and uh, it was just... Uh, it was, it was so awesome. But, you know, initially, I wasn't even, I didn't even know he had retired. But thankfully, he submitted to God's will. He retired, started his own ministry, did that for about three years. Then he um, joined the Army. He served the, uh, the military and the Army for about four years. And uh, that's the origin of our book. And it's just a profound message, and we are just so excited. And we understand that this book it's an assignment. It's an assignment from God, and we just want to um, we want to take this message message around the world. We want it to be become global, but we understand that we can't do it by ourselves. We are created to be in relationships. So once again, we are so honored and thankful that you have invited us on our show. Yes, sir. We so therefore we don't have agendas. So we need you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all work together. You know. Like you said, you know, being on here, you know, we can help promote your book and, and you being on helps me promote my page. And, you know, we just all work together and it all comes together, you know, eventually for the glory of God and everything. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Yeah, I loved it. I love it. Love it. Um, I know you talked about Glenn when he left, you know, him uh, going in doing motivational speaking, you know, with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and that type of thing. And then going into the Army. Uh, when he went into the Army, you know, were you, were you worried for him? Were you proud? Because I know you spent 10 years in the Air Force, so, you know, you know what it was like, what he was going into, and especially at that time, you know, what was going on in the world overseas, you know, and all that, you know, what, what was your emotions during that time? Well, well actually, you, you know, the military has a biblical purpose. You, you, you know, God, you know, he talks about wars and rumors of wars. Yes, sir. You know, so... So, so, so God expects us to, to, uh, to, to serve. He expects us to serve. We, we should have the mentality of a servant. Um, and, 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 you know, killing and murder are two different animals. You, you know, if God didn't allow us to kill our enemies, there would be no freedom. Yes, sir. There would be no America that we know of today, you know, so. So I'm very proud of him, um, you know, uh, going and serving our country. Yeah. I just want to take the time to tell, you know, you and if you'll pass it along to him that we appreciate both y'all service to the country because without people like y'all going you. out and sacrificing and doing the things that y'all do, that's not an easy job going out and doing those things. We wouldn't be able to have the freedoms we do in America and do the things we do in America. You know, you know, if we didn't have people like y'all, yes. we couldn't go out and root for the tide. We couldn't go out and you know, go to church on Sunday mornings, we wouldn't have those freedoms that we have today. I just want to, you know, from, from my heart, I want to say thank y'all for that. You know, that, that really... Well, th well, thank you so much. Yeah, I definitely pass that on to Glenn. Yeah, I mean, I, I really appreciate that. You know, I feel, you know, anytime I talk to somebody that's been in service for the military, or something like, I feel 
humble and you know just you know appreciate the things that they do because it's something i personally don't know that i could do it myself so you know people that make that sacrifice they're a special special type of person yeah you know being in that military environment it definitely takes us out of our comfort zone because you know you, you work side by side with people from all over the world and um we have to protect each other's back i mean i mean you could be in a situation where your life is on the line. Yes, sir. And, and you, 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 you know, you could be in the trenches with somebody, you know, <laughs> that you've never seen before, but yet, you know, we have the same, same uh, immediate uh, interest and it breaks down so many barriers, so many stereotypes, it breaks all that down. Yeah. And, and, and we all serve as a family. So that, you know, that, you know, that alone is, is special. You know, I, I guess it's kind of like, you know, when you're, on a football team when you're in the military you know you don't see color you don't see background you know your brothers you're there to get yes you're all work kind of like what me and you talked about earlier you know there's so much division in the world these days you know it, it's another thing that brings us together as, a, as one people as one you know together for one goal you know exactly exactly yeah you, know, you know we we talked earlier about you know all the you know like i said all the division and everything and, you know, you, you said one of your goals is to do more in community to bring us together, you know, as a, as people. So uh, talk about a little bit about that and, you know, what your goal is with that kind of thing. Yeah, yes. Uh, I mean, community is so important. What we're doing right now is so important because, I mean, we only have one community. We can't trade this community in for another one. So... The, the more we come together, the, the more we uh, you know, get out of our comfort zone, the more we interact with one another, the better our community is going to be. And just like us in writing this book, uh, we, you know, we want to show love. You know, we want to show love because God told our son and I to rise up. And, and speaking about relationships and relationships, you know, we... We relate to one another, one another, one another from what we see on the surface. But if God comes and zaps you and, and, and gives you a blessing, God wants you to share that blessing, not contain it. And and that's why uh, Glenn and I have a relentless pursuit and getting this profound word out. You know, we want it. We want to shout it out around the world. You know, yeah, I think that's awesome. Uh, tell everybody. Well, let me. Before we go on, let me uh, tell some of the people that are new joining. Uh, we got Mr. Glenn Coffey Sr. with us. Uh, him and his son, uh, Glenn Coffey Jr., co-wrote the book, There's More to Life Than the Pursuit of Money. Uh, so we got him on talking a little bit about the book, talking a little bit about Glenn's life, where he's at now, what he's doing. So that's, that's the next thing I kind of wanted you to go into, kind of tell those for that don't know, you know, what Glenn's up to now. I know he's down in Tuscaloosa working with uh, Coach Saban's staff, so you know, what he's doing down there, uh, I think it's pretty cool that he can be down there and influence the young kids down there now coming in and going through the program and stuff down there. Yeah, yes, uh, that, that, that's a very good topic. Yeah, yes, Glenn, uh, I, you know, me personally, yeah, I'm, a, I'm his dad. Uh, you know, I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I really feel in my heart that's exactly where uh, God wants Glenn, you know, because he, he had the opportunity to uh, – he, he had gotten an agent and he was uh he had made an attempt to go back into the league. But while he was training to go back into the league, uh, he was training there at the University of Alabama, and, and that's when him and Coach Saban kind of met. And Coach Saban, he was like, Hey Glenn, uh, you know what you're gonna get out of me? I know what I'm gonna get out of you. You know, we have this position here, you know, it's, it's a great position, you know, you can you can brief the new recruits, you can be responsible for all player development. And, and that's exactly what Glenn has done. I, I, I know, I know he's uh, he's really taken advantage uh, of, of this opportunity because he's a well seasoned man. He's a young man. He, he's a, he's a God fearing man. He has so much to offer to those new recruits or anybody that comes in contact with him. Um, you know, even even when he retired from the Forty Nineers, he kind of woke me up from the days. Uh, in relation to my relationship with God, you know, so uh, I, I just applaud him. I applaud him for what he stands for. I applaud him for his courage. 
I applaud him for fearing God. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just an awesome guy. He just happens to, happens to be my son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think that's something that's needed, you know, like you said, in the position he's at with player development, talking to new recruits and things. You know, a lot of those guys, you know, just to be frank, come from backgrounds where, you know, they didn't grow up around God-fearing people, around God-knowing people. And for him to be in there and to be in that step in their lives when they're taking that next step in their development, taking that next step in their lives, being able to impress that on them and being able to just share those things with them, I think that's a, like you said, that's an awesome opportunity for him. And, you know, kind of like going back to the title of the book, there's more to life than pursuing money. You know, he could have kept pursuing the money and kept trying to get in the NFL, but instead he's down there on the ground making an impact in young guys' lives. Yes. Um, you know, I, if, if I can compare my life with his life, um, you, you know, I grew up uh, without a father. My, my father passed when I was very young. But, but thankfully, uh, my mom did an awesome job. She, she did the best job she could do, you know. But, but, but she simply couldn't give me what she didn't have. She, 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 she raised me to be a man, but she couldn't teach me how to be a man, right? Yeah. You know, so I learned how to be a godly man from reading the Bible. After making mistake after mistake after mistake, I was like, wow, you know, I'm, you know, something, you know, I'm not doing this right, you know. So thankfully I gave God a, I gave God a chance, you know. So I did the Bible. I started reading the Bible and it, and, it, and it became alive to me. It jumped out. The pages jumped out to me and. And, uh, you know, God really touched my heart. So I try to do my best to reflect that onto Glenn. As, as a parent, I'm not saying I did all the right things as a parent, but it, and it helps to have uh, a godly man and a godly woman raising godly kids. I mean, that's, that's how God intended it to be. But through sin, you know, we just – sometimes things don't, don't, don't add up that way, you know, sometimes. But uh, – Chapter five of our chapter five of our of our book is titled The Vikings. And um Glenn's junior year going into his senior year, he got invited to, invited to two Nike camps. And one of those camps was was at LSU. And that's when Coach Sabin was coaching at LSU. And that's when we first met Coach Sabin. And uh while we were waiting to meet meet uh Coach Sabin, we had a chance to mingle and meet the new recruits, right? Yeah. And some of those recruits, what we just got to talking about, they were awesome four-star, five-star athletes, right? But some of those kids, man, you know, they – there was no eye, eye contact. They, some of them didn't even want to shake my hand. I mean, they, they were just prideful like that, you know. They just didn't have the right upbringing. You, you know, uh, some of them had the pants hanging down to the ground, had chains on. It was just <laughs> – but, but to make a long story short um, – you know, Glenn is in a position to really impact those young men's lives, not only to make them make champions out of them, but also to make, you know, godly men out of them. And, and, and that's, that's what we need. You know, we need leaders, you know, our world and our country, we need leaders. Yes, sir. You know, true leaders. Yeah. I know one of the things coach Saban always teaches down there is not only player development, but personal development you know, developing your personal life to go on and do greater things. Because not all them guys, even though they might think so, not all them guys are going to go on and play in the NFL. They got to have other things. They got to have a foundation of other things to build on as they go forward in their lives. And I think that's something where Glenn can step in and really, you know, tell them, hey, you know, I've been here. I've done this. You know, I've been over here. I've had to go through these struggles to get to where I'm at today. So, yeah, I think that's something where he can, you know, really, you know, speak to people and touch them down. Oh, I, I totally, totally agree with that. You know, no, I'm a witness. It, you know, I, I met Coach Saban several times. Uh, you know, my son has a degree from the University of Alabama. He was molded at the University of Alabama. Uh, chapter 7 is titled, uh, Glenn Finds Christ at Bama. You know, so, and, and look, at, look at the man he is today. You know, so Coach Saban, Coach Burns, the faculty there at the University of Alabama, the fans, uh, it's, it's just been a blessing. You know, they, 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 they breed, uh, 
they breed champions and they, they also breed they breed winners in life. You know, so I uh, I totally support the University of Alabama. When when he was down there and found God in Alabama, was it through like a fellowship of Christian athletes thing or what what was it through down there? I, I think it's a, it was a combination of things. I, I know one of his turning points, and we talk about that in the book as well. Uh, um, um, he, he had a roommate named Matt Watson, and Matt was a track star at the University of Alabama. And Matt was a guy on fire for, for Christ. And uh, uh when Glenn met Matt, Glenn was at one of the lowest points of his life life at Alabama because he was he was coming off of an injury. And being a star athlete at one of the greatest universities in the world, and then you have to have to uh, go through an injury that can that would deplete your soul. So so Glenn was down, he was depressed. So he, so he came uh, home one day. He had a new roommate, and once again, Matt was on fire for Christ. And Matt really helped Glenn a lot. You know, you know Matt would bring his Bible everywhere with him. And, and, and Matt had a Matt had a a walk by himself, a confidence that wasn't worldly. And it, it was just so enticing and so attractive that Glenn wanted to know, you know, you know, what, what made him what made him tick. And and Matt sat down with him and they started going over to the Bible with him. And uh that that really helped Glenn a lot with his walk with Christ. Uh and uh, that's 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 the power of fellowship. Yes, sir. You, you, you know, when we meet a stranger, or if we meet each other, when we leave, we should feel so encouraged. That's that's the way that's the way fellowship should work. <laughs> you know, you meet somebody, your conversation should be so motivating and so powerful that you want to go out and move some mountains. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's the way it should be. <laughs> you know, like you said, God always puts those people in our lives and in our path that, you know, we, when, like you said, Glenn was going through that injury. I guess that was his red shirt year there, kind of in the middle of his career. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and, yeah, he was down. He was down and out, man. And God's going to put those people in our path, even though we don't know it. We don't know what's going on. We ain't expecting it, but he'll put those people in our path that we, he knows what we need in the time we need it. You know, to put those people to help teach us things, to help us grow. You know that that type. Of yes. Yeah, you know, he always knows what we need. Uh, those y'all just now joining. You know, this is the uh, the fa father of former Bama great Glenn Coffee Jr. It's Glenn Coffee Senior. We're all talking about uh, their new book. There's more to life than the pursuit of money. Uh, here on Talking Sports from Alabama. Uh, so uh, let's see what. So what are you thinking about uh, this year's Alabama team and the program down there? I mean, we've talked a lot, you know, about the other stuff. So we'll talk a little bit of football for just a second. You know, what what are you thinking about this year and how it's going down there? What are your thoughts on the team? Well, um, I, I, I think this year is going to be a year for the fans. You know, I, I think – well, well, I think Alabama is going to repeat. <laughs> but, but just – College football, especially in the SEC, I think it's going to be a year for the fans. And what I mean by that is that I think the teams are going to be so good. The game level is going to be – the bar is going to be set so high, not only in Alabama, but at a lot of the other SEC schools as well. And I just – I think the games is going to be just crazy fun. I just think it's going to be a year for the fans, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think it's we just going to – we really gonna get our money's worth this year. <laughs> I think so. oh, we did. We did last year too. I know we was down at a oh, God. Man, that hey, you know that uh, that championship game last year. To, to finish my section of the book, I feel like a nomad. To finish my section of the book, I was in San Antonio with my brother. I, I was in San Antonio for a year to finish my section of the book up, and I, we watched the game at the Bama San Antonio alumni chapter there in San Antonio. <laughs> Man, that game was just for, – for at one time we were laughing, the next time we were praying, the next time we were crying. It was just – it was. I just never watched a game like that before, you know. <laughs> and finally we won, man. It was just like pandemonium, man. It was like, oh, my God. I, I think it took years off Thank my life. <laughs> for, uh, football. What did you I say? I think it took years off my life watching that game. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that was that, that, it's one to always remember. I tell you that. Definitely. Um, <laughs> so tell people when's the book coming out and how they can get it. I thought you would never ask. <laughs> But, uh, okay, right now, the, the status of the book right now, I will receive my complimentary books so I can read uh, front to back. And I should have my complimentary books uh, this week or early next week. So I read it front to back to make sure this is exactly what we want to release to the world. And then I call my publisher and tell her to start printing them out. And, uh, and that should take about a month or so. And then we'll start our book tour. We're, 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 we're set to have a national book tour, actually. Awesome. But once again, yes, it's such a blessing. Uh, Glenn is in Tuscaloosa, of course, and I'm in Athens, Alabama. And that's, that's about two hours north of Glenn. And right here in my immediate area, we would have, uh, right now we're set to have two or three book signings. One is going to be the Green Bra Restaurant featuring Miss Charlene Barnett. She's put a buzz in the air, man, that, uh, that, that's why I live here. I, you know, phase two of the book, phase one was to write the book, you know, promote it. Phase two was to, was to position myself for distribution of the book. And the reason I'm here in Athens is because of this lady named Miss Charlene Barnett. She just created such a buzz in this area to where we got some crazy amount of pre-orders already, you know. That's awesome. And we also going to do locally here in uh, Athens, we're going to do another uh, book signing. Um, at a place called, uh, what's the name of it? Access My Realtor is called A Point. And it's going to be at uh, Realty Auction. And what we'll do, of course, we'll, uh, we'll blast social media about the dates, the times, and locations. And um, we'll put things in the paper. We'll notify. We'll make sure everybody's notified. And, and also, uh, we have a, a publicist named uh, Miss... Uh, Rebecca Milder, she's awesome. She's the editor for the University of uh, Tusca Tuscaloosa there. And we also have a uh, podcasting team featuring Mr. Uh, Romel Thomas out of uh, D.C. Uh, just, you know, you know the, the, the book itself is, is, is uh, an assignment from God, right? But another yes, profound blessing is that the people, the people that he's put into our lives, this journey that we're on right now, just the new people that God has put into our lives. And once again, you know, if anybody has claimed any type of wealth or earned any type of wealth, you can't do it by yourself. You have to have other people helping you. You, you know, we, we don't live on islands, you know, so we are just, uh, just excited to, uh, to chase after God, you know? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on, and I'm I'm gonna definitely whenever y'all get the book out, get the book signings going. I'm gonna come down to a signing. I'd love to meet you and Glenn in person. Um, you know, I'd love love to do that. Love to have fun with that and meet y'all. And you know, when you get it going, get ready to start promoting. Let me know, and I'll put it out on all my social media sites and and make sure and put it out there for y'all for sure. Hey, thank you so much, Brett. That that would be awesome. Uh, this has truly been a pleasure. And um, we hope it won't be the last time. Yes, sir. I'd love to have you on any time. We appreciate it. And uh, I hope you and your family have a blessed evening. Let let Glenn know that uh, we're, we're rooting for him and praying for him for everything he's doing down there. And uh, want, hopefully, hopefully he has great success down there with Alabama. Hey, thank you so much, Brad. All right. You have a good evening, Mr. Coffey. Oh, you too. Roll, Roll time. time. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you.